the Federal Reserve had added a huge amount of liquidity to the market in 1999. The Federal Reserve increased liquidity by uh, buying up government bonds, which increased the reserves of the banking system. And then, because it thought the ATMs might fail because they run on computers, they actually printed up huge amounts of cash and, and had you know trucks taking currency to the banks. So the banks would have the currency. I mean, the banks would pay for the currency by, you know, just you know, the, 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 using the liquidity that the Federal Reserve had in, given them by buying government bonds. Uh, they would just convert the deposit at the Federal Reserve into vault cash, which is considered part of the monetary base. Uh, and so there was a huge amounts of currency in all the major financial institutions just in case the computers failed. So, you know, you might not be able to get your money out of the ATM, but you just go through the door of the bank and they'll give you, you can take your money out in cash by going up traditional banking, uh, going up to the counter and saying, I would like to withdraw a thousand or 10,000 or something like that. So the Federal Reserve actually loosened quite a bit in late 1999. And this seemed to make the stock market go up rapidly to new highs. You may not remember, but the last thousand points on NASDAQ sort of occurred in October, November, December of 1999, when money was really loose because the Federal Reserve was preparing us for the Y2K disaster that didn't happen. And then when Y2K didn't happen in December, uh, in, in January 1st, the year 2000, the Federal Reserve said, okay, we got to take away that liquidity we put in. And so they started taking the liquidity, the Y2K liquidity back. And sure enough, the Dow Jones average peaked in the middle of January 2000. I think the uh, NASDAQ went on for a couple months, uh, but a lot of the gains of the uh, dot-com bubble were in the last few months, and I think they were fueled by the Y2K injections of liquidity by the Federal Reserve. And when Y2K didn't happen, the Federal Reserve removed its injections of liquidity, and that caused the stock market, which had been pushed up by the injections, to start going down. Markets turned down in January 2000, they didn't stop uh, turning down until October 2002. But, uh, so that was a big speculative uh, uh, movement and the market crashed about, you know, 50%, I think, in 2000, 2002. But we, that didn't cause a, a recession. Uh, or even, a, well, there was a recession in 2001, but it was one of the mildest on record. It lasted for six months. Uh, so um, there wasn't a major damage to the economy from uh, the dot-com bubble. Uh, and that tells us something about the context. 1907 was bad, 1929-33 was, 1930-33, those were bad times because a lot of banks failed. But banks didn't fail at all after the dot-com bubble crashed. So that one thing we learn about crises is that they're much worse when the banks have problems. That if the stock market crashes, you know, the market has its own life. It goes up a lot and falls a lot. Uh, if the banks aren't involved, we're, we're probably pretty safe. <laughs>